In this video we're going to carry on doing some isometric drawing using 2D design and we're going to move it on a little bit and we're going to now look at using uh, ellipse shapes to create circles in 3D. Now we've done this on paper before so a little refresher about the difference between oblique and isometric. Oblique is when you look at something flat face on and when you put it into isometric you're skewing it and looking at it from, a, from an angle. Now if you're going to make a circle, if you look at a circle in oblique view, it's a circle, but when you put it into isometric it becomes an ellipse. And if you're going to do that by hand, you'd use an ellipse template. For what we're going to do on the computer, we need to use the ellipse tools that come with it. And just like in the last exercise, we're going to use the parallelogram tool, the ellipsoid bezier tool, move and copy, and also the 3D transform. Now when you go to 2D design and open it up, just like you did previously, what you're going to need to do is to set the page up for A4. So we go Setup, Drawing, Layout, change the size from A3 to A4. This time we're going to leave it in Landscape, so we'll leave that as it is and click OK. Same thing that we did before, we're also going to double click on the grid and set the grid angle to be isometric and we're going to change the grid spacing again from 10 and change that down to 5 on the X and on the Y and click OK. OK, just like we did also previously, so a bit more practice, we're going to use the parallelogram tool which if you click and hold on shapes is the fourth one from the end and we need to have grid lock selected so we lock onto the grid. Right, we're going to click somewhere towards the top and the middle of the page and we're going to draw a rectangle that is sized at 70 millimeters width by 130 length. So let's click to start and move along the line and again look down at the bottom here for the distance and we're looking for 70. So we've got 40, uh, 55, 60, 65, 70. When we get to that number we can click and then move now in the opposite direction and the other line and we want this one to be sized at 130. So keep going along the line 120, 125, 130 and click. Now what we're going to do, we're going to map out where the dimples are going to go. Now this is a, a standard sort of 4 by 2 brick. So we're going to have 2 dimples by 4 dimples. And we need to zoom in a bit to have a look at this. I'm going to use the parallelogram again. And what you need to do is start at one of the corners. It can be any at the top left or right or bottom. And we're going to move two squares from the end and start two squares from the bottom and two, two from the side. So we're going to start just here, two squares either way. Click to start. And we're going to make each square 20 by 20. So look again at your size. It's basically four squares. So one, two, three, four. Click. And then move the other direction. Another four. One, two, three, four. And click. And we're going to carry on doing that. But we're going to make sure that every time we leave two space. So it's quite simple. Four by four squares. And two spaces in between. So click. One, two, three, four. Click. And that's going to be where our dimples are going to go. Same thing on this side. One, two, three, four. You can do it in either direction. It'll still work as long as you do it four by four and leave two spaces. And final one like that. So that's where the dimples are going to go. Now we're going to do the, the tricky bit of creating the dimples. Now we're going to create the bottom of the dimples first, like the base of them and then draw them as they come out into 3D. So for that we're going to use the ellipsoid bezier tool. Let's click on that. And just the same way that you've drawn those diamond shapes, those diamond shapes really are just there to help us to, to guide us so we know they're the right size. So we click on each of the corners. So pick one, start your first click on one corner, come across to the second, and then go across to the final one and click again. So it's one, 
click two, click three. Click once, two, three, one, two, three. So these are the circles for the base. I'm not going to do the other side because I'm going to show you how to cheat a little bit. Now what we want to do is to make a copy of these circles to make the depth of our of our dimple. Now rather than drawing it out again, we could draw it out again, but rather than drawing it out again, we can cheat. We can select that dimple and use your transform move and copy tool. We're going to repeat it once rather than replace. Click OK. And again, you draw you draw how much you want it to go up by. Now we want it to go up by two squares. So click anywhere along here and move up by two squares. And you can see there it's put another dimple on for me. Now that's ready for us to start making some... We can actually get rid of this diamond shape now. We don't need it. So we can select that and hit delete to get rid of it. It's useful at first, but it's not really that much use now anymore. But it can be quite confusing trying to draw an ellipse without a diamond shape to guide you where to put where to click on the corners. Now to finish this dimple off, what we're going to need to do is to use the line tool and then go over to use attach and then switch grid lock off. And we very simply just click on the edge and it will attach itself to the edge of the line at the edge of the ellipse. Move down to the, the bottom one and click and it should lock on. Click here and click here and now all that's left to be done is to click and hold on delete to get delete part and then we can trim where they overlap and that will give us our dimple. Now we know how to make one ellipsoid into a 3D dimple we could repeat that same process again for all of these. Now that would take a little bit of time and there's a much quicker way of doing it. So rather than selecting that and then going to transform and repeating it once and having a, a two dimple space then using the line and attach it's good to know how it's done but it takes quite a long time and for you to do that to all of all of the dimples would be quite time consuming and computer-aided design is all about learning some shortcuts and how to make your life easier if it's easier to do it on a computer then do it on a computer if it's easier to do it by hand we'll do it by hand now there's a much easier way of doing this rather than making lots and lots all from scratch what we're going to do is make one of them copy three or four times across to the side so what I'm going to do I'm going to take a bit of a risk and I'm going to delete all of these that I've just created and to do that we drag a box around them and just hit the delete key Right, that's a little bit risky, but let's give it a go. So what we're going to do now is select this whole dimple, and we're going to use our transform tool again. Now, I'm going to make one of them in this direction, so we can leave that as it is. And we need to put grid lock back on, switch attach off, and I just need to draw a space 30 millimeters distance or six squares. So click to start and look at the bottom 20 25 30 or we should count six squares one two three four five six and then click now that's put another one in that position and what we're going to do is cheat again and copy both of those by dragging a box around them both do the same thing go to the transform tool we're going to repeat it three times this time and again, we're going to click on here and just move six squares or 30 millimeters at the bottom, 25, 30, click, and that's it. So we've cheated quite a bit and saved ourselves quite a bit of time. All we need to do now is to finish off our Lego brick. I'm going to leave that up to you as to how, how deep you want your Lego brick to be. I'm going to make mine 30, but you might want to have a particularly thick one or you might want to have quite a shallow one but now that you know how to make it there's a few finishing touches that we can add to this obviously we've got some color some boundary fill that we can add in um, 
let's say let's go for a nice blue or purple again no islands and what you can do is you can fill them all in with a colour and if you want to you can change the colour afterwards I'm just going to leave all of mine pink for the time being but if you want to you can change the colour after and there's a few other things that we can do we can add on some text because this is a Lego brick we can add on some text now to do this we go to the ABC tool again click on the page and type in Lego and the font that we're going to use is called elementary so if you just type in EL it'll come up there elementary or elementary heavy either of those will do and click OK and we need to make it a little bit narrower so let's just pull that in a bit to make it narrower and we also want it to be in italic so let's go into property there's our Lego go into settings and let's change that to bold italic that looks a bit more like it now what we're going to do is to make that roughly the right sort of size for a dimple about there and we could leave it at that but it's not quite an isometric so we need to change that and transform it using the 3d effects into isometric so it's on isometric we need the depth to be zero and uh, we'll see what right hand view looks like we'll retain the original just in case we make a mistake click anywhere on the page now I can see that that one is okay it just needs a bit of just needs a bit of revolving rotating around to, to get it into the right sort of place but that is actually okay now again what we can do here get it positioned onto one of our dimples and cheat just like we've done before get a transform and we're gonna repeat it three times with gridlock on and just click and move six squares or 30 millimeters that way and we can do the same thing here click on one and if you press and hold shift when you select the other ones it will select all of those and we're gonna transform them repeating it once instead of three times and then move one two three four five six or thirty millimeters in that direction and we are done this we can get rid of now and now that you know how to build that you can start going mad and you can build lots of bricks you can have them on top of each other we could make a copy of this now that we know how it's done by just doing that if you're going to do that though what I would suggest you do is you group group your shape together um, you might want to bring that to the front there we go so now we've got an exploded in a different color it may be that we might want to change the color of this and because we've got it all grouped together uh, we could maybe change that to blue and we can experiment and you can add some smaller ones maybe a smaller brick and get as creative as you can remember to put your name on your work and we're going to print these out at the end of, of the lesson so make sure you've got your name and your dt group on before you print them good luck look forward to seeing how you get on